This session will be concerned with parameterization techniques. The question is, how can we make a definition such as merge sort more general so that they can be used not for a single argument type? We'll see in this session how parameterization by either functions or objects helps in this respect. One shortcoming of the merge sort function we've seen last session was that it can only be applied to list of ints. But it makes sense to apply the same function or a similar function also to lists of other element types such as strings or doubles or booleans and so on. Um, how could we achieve that? Well, the most straightforward way to do that would be let's parameterize merge sort. So instead of int, I have a type parameter t now. But that wouldn't work because the comparison function wouldn't be well defined. So let's have a look at that. Here I have the merge sort that we have defined at the end of the last session. Let's just replace the int by a t and make t a type parameter. And the same thing here for the merge, which takes the type parameter of the enclosing function m sort. And what do we see? Well, we see one error here, which says that value less is not a member of type parameter t. Of course, now that our list elements can have an arbitrary type, we can no longer be sure that there is in fact a less than function defined on elements of this type. So what can we do? Well, the next refinement of our idea would be to parameterize merge with the necessary comparison function. So let's see how that would work. We would have a polymorphic function m sort with a type parameter t, and in addition to the list that we pass to m sort, we also pass a less than function with an lt here that takes two t's and returns a boolean. And the contract for lt would be that it should return the result of comparing its two elements with a less than. Once we have that, then we need to apply lt in two instances. Let's see how we would do that in the worksheet. So I have here, I pass an lt which takes two t's and returns a boolean. And then I can write here, instead of x less than y, I can write here lt of x and y in the merge function. That's good. But uh, I have another problem here. For the sort here, of course, I have to pass the correct LT function into the two recursive calls of M sort. And finally, for the numbers here, I have to pass the right version of LT into numbers. So one way to do that would be to say, well, let's take an int x and a y, which is also of int type int, and return x less than y. And that would compile. And if we run it, we get the same result as before. What we can do now is we can also add a uh, data of another type. Let's call, let's say, fruits. That would be a list of, let's say, apple, pineapple, orange and banana. And we can now apply m sort to the fruits list. All we have to do is pass the right comparison function. So this one here would take two strings and it would return the result of the Java call x compared to y and that, that must be less than zero. So compare to is a method on Java string which returns minus one if the first string is less than the second string, uh, zero if they're equal, and one if the first one is greater than the second one. So since we want minus one, we have this test here, less than zero. Let's run the worksheet and we see that indeed our list of fruit has been sorted in lexicographical order. In fact, we can simplify the uh, calls here further because the types of the two function values are not necessary. We can leave them out and the Scala compiler will infer them. So we could also write something like that. And uh, that would give us the same list, obviously. 
and we could also leave the types uh, out in the uh, second function values over strings. The reason why that works is that the Scala compiler is, figure out, is able to figure out that x and y need to have type int uh, by simply analyzing the call of m sort of nums. Because nums is a list of int, it will therefore know that the type parameter of m sort must be int, and that will determine in turn the types of the function parameters here. Uh, that discussion shows that it's usually advantageous if you have several parameter lists and one of them is a function value to put the function value last, because then you have a better chance that the types are already inferred by the time the compiler will type check the function value and that means you don't have to write them explicitly. So, so far we have parameterized the merge sort function with our own less than operation which is perfectly possible, but on the other hand, we could also use a predefined class. There is already a class in the standard library that represents orderings with less than function, but also all the other ordering functions like greater than, less than or equal, and so on. That class is called scala.math.ordering of t, so the type parameter t tells us what's the type of the elements that are compared in the ordering class. Instead of parameterizing with the less than function directly, we could also parameterize m sort with ordering instead. So it wouldn't be much that we had to change. Let's go in the worksheet and have a look at it. So instead of less than, we would have a parameter ord of type ordering of t. Uh, we should import that first, import math.ordering. And then instead of the less than call here, we would call the less than method of our ordering type. And instead of passing less than along, we can pass order long. And in our uh, actual calls, we can now use uh, the predefined orderings. That The first one would be ordering.int. That's the ordering on integers that is defined as a value in the ordering object and for the other one, it would be ordering.string. And the results are the same as before, unsurprisingly. So there's one remaining problem. In passing around these LT or ORT values is rather cumbersome. Uh, it would be much nicer if we could somehow synthesize the right comparison operation directly, just given the type T. And we can make it at least appear that way by avoiding passing ORT explicitly and making it an implicit parameter. So the only thing here is that we write implicit ORT.ordering. So all I do now is I write implicit in front of the ORT parameter. Nothing changes so far, but what it means is that I can now leave out the actual uh, parameter in a, in a call and the compiler will synthesize one for me. So I can leave out the ORT here, and I can leave out the ORT there, and I can even leave out the ORT in the ordering.int or the ordering of string, and everything would still compile and run as before. So I can get rid of, get rid of the ordering of string as well, and it's still the same thing. So now my program is just as concise and nice as in the case of list of ints, but it's fully parametric. How did that happen? How, do, how could we achieve that? Well, what actually happens is that when we write an implicit parameter and you don't write an actual argument that matches that parameter, the compiler will figure out the right implicit to pass based on the demanded type. So what are the precise rules for that? So let's say a function takes an implicit parameter of type t. The compiler will then search for an implicit definition, so that's a parameter or a val or an object that's marked implicit and that has a type that's compatible with t. And finally, it's visible at the point of the function call or it's defined in a companion object associated with t. So in our case, here. We had the first ORT that we left out here. That was visible at the point of the function call, because the ORT here is visible, whereas the 
uh, orderings that we left out here. They were defined in the companion object of the ordering class and therefore also qualified as implicit arguments. So once the compiler has done that search, if it comes back with a single most specific definition, that definition will ta be taken as the actual argument. So the, uh, that will be the synthesized argument for the implicit parameter. And otherwise, if the compiler finds nothing, or it defines several po possible candidate definitions, then it's an error. So let's test your understanding with a simple quiz. Consider the line in the definition of M sort where you have the two recursive calls. So that would be this line here. Which definition of ordering is implicitly inserted by the compiler here and here? Is it ordering.int or ordering.string? or the ORD parameter of the MSORT function. 